This dog, believe it or not, is only uh, nine weeks old now. Well, anyway, I'm sidetracked now. The the doghouse. Um, I just want to thank my dad for building the the uh, doghouse, as he does with everything. It's uh, very sturdy. Um, disappointed in your level of intelligence. Um, you're a moron. Um, oh, rabbits escaping. Okay, guys, I'd like to talk to you about um, um, my rabbit habitat today, and uh, I got some comments of people saying uh, protection against wildlife or birds, and so that has been covered. Um, let's talk about aerial attack, and no, I'm not talking about the Little Mermaid. I'm talking about the ones in the sky. Okay guys, so um, I will leave the link in the description and maybe a little card at the end of the, uh, of the video. Um, me and my family built this when we built this and we actually have video of us building all this. What we did is, hey little guy, is uh, we put a pole here in the middle and we ran fishing string down to every single T post here. And then what we got is we got a, a aluminum uh, duct tape. I'll try to I'll try to talk in between the honks of the goose. <laughs> we got aluminum duct tape, and we put aluminum duct tape uh, on here all the way around. So what does that look like from uh, aerial attack? Um, the birds look down, and um, I can only guess what a bird thinks. They're probably thinking, "Wow." Are these razor blades? If I fly in here, I'm going to get hung up with my wings and sliced up. I'm not going to risk it because predators are very smart. They like easy prey. They're not going to risk their life to attack. And so I, I had this up, so this actually works. How much does this cost, you might ask? I sound like a salesman now, don't I? Yeah. That's a great question, is uh, how much does this cost? I'm probably into this, uh, this whole um, aerial defense system. Um, one, two, four dollars. I'm into about four dollars. That's including the tape and the uh, uh, fishing string. So four dollars, and uh, we've had it all year. And actually, if you all look this way to the top of that tree, right there on the very top, We've had a bald eagle sitting right there. A bald eagle sitting right there on top, looking down into here and contemplating whether to fly down in here and to uh, harvest one of my rabbits. And it said, ain't worth it, not gonna do it. And if I can get the camera woman to back up, see this here? This is my dog defense system. Uh, so uh, this will stop a dog. This kind of moves around. And it also scares dogs, so it works for, and, and then the birds can't land here and, uh, and think about landing and killing my prey. But I also kind of think it works for dogs, too. So, uh, that answers my question about uh, protection against wildlife and big birds. Or was you meaning like big birds like Sesame Street Big Bird? Because that's one hell of a big bird. And I don't know if there's any protection against that. I guess a rape whistle would be the thing you'd want to use. Okay, guys, I got another comment that uh, says uh, build shelter for the animals. Um, these guys are awesome. They built their own shelter. All I did, so I took a pallet. I just threw it on the ground. I put a, a, a tarp on top of it to protect the rain from coming down to keep it dry underneath. And then I just threw some branches on here to, to make it, and that gives them like a sense of security. And because uh, it's like they know that they're safe from um, aerial attacks and they, they dive under here. So believe it or not, underneath where I'm kneeling is actually, they have a home. Even where you're looking, the camera woman, underneath her feet, is probably dug out that far, is uh, their home throughout this whole area. And so uh, they, they built their own shelters and they've, uh, they survive um, uh, uh, rough summers, uh, hard winters, and uh, they, they, they're thriving now. Um, so um, yeah, they built their own home. Very cool, very easy. That makes it a lot easier for me and my, my dad to uh, 
to build the shelter for. So, this is my this is my personal protection dog. So mean. Where you at? You're so mean. You're so mean. Oh, lick. Oh. I, I kissed as it licked. I almost <laughs> sucked his tongue in my mouth. You're distracting me. You're distracting me. You're distracting me. Go, go play. Uh, okay. So anyway, um, the other comment that I've gotten a lot that I'd like to address about the rabbit habitat is uh, that they're going to dig out. Me and my family. Again, I'll leave the link in the description, um, and I'll put a card at the end of the video. Is uh, me and my family gathered all these rocks all the way around the pen, and so. We're kind of hoping that they don't dig underneath. That stops them from that. And we haven't, we've had, a, we've had it for a year and they haven't dug underneath either. Which brings me to my next uh, point I would like to talk about. Is that um, rabbits escaping? Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, rabbits, uh, it's kind of like a self defense, but it's kind of how they assure their survival of species is that they multiply a lot. Have you ever heard of the uh, of the of of the saying um, multiply like rabbits or breed like rabbits? Well, they do exactly that. There's a reason why people say that is because they do multiply um, very quickly. Uh, one rabbit will will produce um, several rabbits every month, and. Uh, so if one or two were to escape, it's not the end of the colony. So anyway, back to point is that uh, if one or two rabbits were to escape, it's not the end of the world. I probably won't even notice. And if I saw a hole that goes down here and pops up underneath the rocks and out here, um, how hard is it to uh, cave in that hole? Just smash the hole down and, th and they're good. And um, honestly, I just don't see that they want to leave too far away from their home. And um, even if they do leave and I see them in my field, um, I have Ruger. And no, I'm not talking about the dog, I'm talking about the brand of a gun. As uh, I will drop that rabbit and harvest that rabbit. I hope that don't offend anybody, but uh, I need to eat too. That's why we raise rabbits, is even though they're on the endangered species list, they are also on the menu. And now I would like to address the most, uh, on the last video, what everybody has been talking about. Um, shelters. Uh, this, if you notice here, this is an old shelter. So this is an old shelter that I had here in the, uh, in the tarp. Wind broke it down. Nobody's used this uh, pin here for over a year, maybe. And um, there's snow has gone into there. Um, not good. So this shelter here, uh, a lot of you are upset with me because you're saying I have no shelter for the pot belly pig. Um, this is shelter for the pot belly pig. It might not have a wood burning stove inside, it might not have uh, a, a central heating, but it has everything that a pig needs. So the protection from the wind here and, 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 and this, and it keeps it from snow coming here. Look how dry this is, see that? See the dust coming up here? That's, uh, that's extremely dry. So the pig is staying uh, dry and um, warm just brought you over to here. I want to talk about Tipsy the pig over here. Tipsy the pig over here is uh, chooses its own shelter. Um, it can actually fit through these squares and it lives in that box. The goats live here and here. So everything here on the farm has shelter. The only thing that does not have shelter are, are my cows. And I yes, I've gotten a few comments about that. Um, it's not typical for here in the West for cows to have shelter. 
Um, matter of fact, most cows, most, I'd say 95% of cows do not have shelter um, at all, period. Um, would I like to get shelter? I know I'm just starting off here. Yes, I would like to get shelter. Uh, you guys can donate to, uh, we'll, we'll leave a link down in the description of places you can donate and we can build a shelter. Hey guys, thank you for being part of our vlog today. I hope that uh, I clarified a few of the comments and um, we will see you in the next one.